Hello and welcome to the bike show once again. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we tested this, the s 1000 rr from BMW, the new 2015 model. Matt rode it on track and declared it the best thing since sliced bread. I rode it on the road and screamed a lot. But at the same time, we did say that a couple of weeks' time, the new R1 Yamaha was going to be launched. So is it possible that the BMW has had the shortest reign at the top of the heap for any bike ever? Matt and Donovan were in Cape Town to find out. The R1 is, and there's no getting away from this, a bit of a legend. Much of that legend was built by this, the first R1 that appeared way back in 1998. I went on the South African launch of it back then, and it was an absolute revelation. A huge engine, a bulging mid-range, and all in a very small package. The bike went through a few changes over the years, but the next big leap came in 2009 with this, the cross-plane crank model that became known as the Big Bang R1. Decent mid-range, beautiful looks, and it made one of the best sounds in motorcycling. And now, a further six years later, we have this, the totally new R1, probably the closest thing you can get to a proper MotoGP racer for the road. I say that because the R1 and its more expensive R1M stablemate that you see here in silver have been heavily influenced by Yamaha's MotoGP machines. The M version, of which only seven have come to South Africa, is the same as the standard R1, apart from a smattering of carbon fiber and, most importantly, electronic semi-active suspension from Olin's. Otherwise, they're the same bike with a chassis and overall dimensions that are remarkably close to the race bikes of Rossi and Lorenzo. South African Dave Freeman has worked in MotoGP and was at the R1's world launch in Australia. So we asked him whether this new R1 was designed as a road bike or as a race bike. The brief was they wanted to build a 100% pure race bike and then add lights that you can ride it on the road. They want to go out, win a world championship for this motorbike and show everybody its potential. If you think it looks familiar, that's because it's a close copy, at least visually, of the MotoGP race bike. Very close. Body styling uh, with the air intake in the front. If you look at it from the front profile, you'd say it looks like an M1. And a lot of the engineers that were working on the M1 project ended up on R1 project. The engine is an evolution of the existing cross-plane crank model, made more lively by new materials and technology. Main materials and lightning and everything, you know, the, the old engine was heavy, the old bike was heavy, so it had to go on a diet. So they've used titanium a lot, new titanium fractured conrods that they're using, uh, titanium valves, which most of the superbikes have had today, uh, a lot of magnesium casings, uh, aluminium engine bolts on the covers to lighten everything. Uh, different clutch, instead of the old slipper clutch, it's now got a ramp clutch, so the diameter of the clutch is smaller, less springs, less weight. Uh, so I think they, they took around about five kilos out, out of the engine, just on, on weight wise. Making more power means the engine has to breathe more efficiently than it did, and that means changes to the air intake system. The older bike had ram air around the side, and back to M1 and styling, big ram air through the front, but through the center of the headstock on the frame now. So the air box is, is a lot larger, um, more power. And of course, with big power, you need big brakes, and Yamaha's unified braking system is both big and very clever. Basically, you could leave the rear brake alone, only use front brake on corner entry, with the, it's got a six axis gyro on the bike, so it can determine your speed into a corner, and it can tell, determine how, how the bike is angled. So as soon as you apply the brake, pressure on the front wheel, it'll tell it, okay, now I need to add rear brake to, to bring the rear of the bike down for stability. And as soon as you lean the, the bike, the gyro will sense, okay, now you're starting to lean, it starts releasing off the back brake. So that's always kind of, it's, it's not a set parameter, no, 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 it's, no. it's shifting all, all the time. time. What's at the heart of, of the bike's brain is this, what is it again, a six axis? Gyro. Gyro, so just show me, you showed me on the hands, it's, so normally your gyro would be pitching backwards back and, and forwards. Forward, yes. You would side, get the side. angle, yeah. and, and then now the other... sixth axis, what, so what's well, going on? Well, it's, it's, it's like a compass, so you, even side, side angle is telling anything. If the bike is moving sideways, it, then you okay. start to get the, the side slide slip control. <laughs> so as soon as it starts moving sideways, it starts picking that up as well. 
So what electronics are looking after us then while we're using the tyre's edge grip through the mid-turn? Middle of the corner, same thing, traction control yeah. like we had on the old bikes. But we also have the, the side, side slip control. So this determines now, OK, when you're accelerating out of the corner or mid-corner, if the rear starts to move, it'll cut the ignition to pull it back. Similar to traction control, but two different areas. This will, traction control is, is wheel spinning, yeah. front wheel speed, rear wheel speed. Side now is actually moving sideways. On the corner exit, when you're trying to get to max throttle as quickly as possible, that's where the anti-lift trickery comes into its own, stopping those unwanted wheelies. Exactly that, so you can hold it out of a corner, you can hit a bump, hit a curb, it's not ever going to go over backwards. The new R1 is an unbelievably exciting ride at the track. Its technology is breathtaking in its abilities, and it encourages average riders like me to push my own limits. But what we all really want is to see this bike racing on the world stage. So is that likely to happen? I think 2016 we'll see it in, in uh, World Superbike. I think there's a bit of rule changes and things like that that want to get under, under sorted out first. But their main objective for this year was to prove us their bike, they're building standard for the road into endurance racing will win and into super stock racing will win. Obviously BSB are doing their things with it, but their main goal is in super stock to show off the showroom floor, take the lights and mirrors, that's the bike to ride. Yamaha may have been rather quiet on the sport bike front for far too long, but this new R1 marks a devastating return to form. As a track bike, it sets new standards, no mistake. But only some future testing will determine if that's the case on the road as well. So, final conclusions. Well, I'm not sure I've got enough superlatives. The engine is a hard-hitting demon. The handling is super, super sharp. And the electronics, well, they're simply amazing. Do you fancy playing at being a MotoGP racer? Well, if you do, there's only one bike that can give you that kind of thrill. And it's a Yamaha. Stupidly fast Yamaha. I mean, it's almost too much. It's a ridiculous piece of kit. OK, welcome back. Now, that was quite a lot of muttering at the end of it. Are you getting old? You Is it a getting old? It was old a long time ago. <laughs> Is this bike too much for you? Oh, that's a leading question. Over to you, Donovan. <laughs> to be honest, I'm a, little, I'm a lot younger than him. I'm the youthful one in the show. And I was stuffed after that bike, really. It's the first time in history that I've actually been stiffed after a launch. And you've been to a lot of world launches, I've, I've Ducati the BMW Superbikes. BMW world and, launches. Yeah. I went to a BMW racing world launch. I've been to the Ducati world launch. I've never been stiff. And yet, the bike's actually remarkably easy to ride quick. Well, I say easy to ride quickly. I mean, the handling is so light, isn't it? it is. It's just the motor's such a beast. You've, you've got to hang on. To be honest, I barely noticed how good the handling was. All I was thinking about is, right, after this corner, there's a straight. And I was coming out of there sort of third gear, I don't know, whatever speed, and I was battling to actually hold on to this thing. And I thought, I'm being a bit of a hack here. And then when we were doing the onboard laps, I was behind you, and you were doing exactly the same thing. But now, I mean, are the electronics as good as the BMW? Or are they having to work harder, or what's going on here? Better. Oh, good, put it that way. I will say this much, that wheelie control. I rode Sylvan Barrier's World Superbike BMW with factory electronics. The wheelie, the wheelie control on that bike feels as good as this, as this R1. So, come on, $64,000 question. Is it the new king of the superbikes? Has, has BMW's reign been swept away after two weeks? I'm scared to say maybe, yes. Maybe, yeah. I would say already, you can only ever really tell when you test back to back. And on the track, I'd have to say, I think the R1's definitely got the edge. As a road bike, a guy's going to ride a superbike on the road primarily. Possibly the BM is a little bit more friendly to ride. Yeah. And let's not forget. That's one way of putting it. Yeah, yeah but there's, <laughs> there's one very important factor we don't know exactly yet. But the R1 is going to be considerably more expensive. Even than the BM. Than the BM. BM's what, about 215, depending 250, on the spec yeah, of yeah. electronics. To so what's the, what's the MR going to come in at? 240, maybe. And let's not forget there's an N version. Which is going to be how much? 320, 330. Three, yeah, they said something around there, 314 perhaps. But that's the, that's the same price as the Rode H2 Kawasaki, though, isn't it? Yes. So 
Which we will ride shortly. We will ride shortly. Yes, Ooh, I know. It's the a... battle's hotting up.